Welcome back to the Phantom Toll Booth. And Milo has just escaped from the terrible trivium. Run, run! It urged once more, and now the humbug, not caring who said it, ran desperately after his two friends with the terrible trivium close behind. This way, this way, the voice called again. They turned in its direction and scrambled up the difficult slippery rocks, sliding back at each step almost as far as they'd gone forward. With a great effort and many helping paws from Tuck, they reached the top of the ridge at last, but only two steps a ahead of them, the furious trivium. Only two steps ahead of the furious trivium. <laughs> over here, over here, advised the voice without and without a moment's hesitation, they started through a puddle of sticky ooze, which quickly became ankle deep, then knee deep, then hip deep, <clears throat> until finally they were struggling along through what felt very much like a waist deep pool of peanut butter. The trivium, who had discovered a mound of pebbles which needed counting, followed no more, but stood at the edge, shaking his fist, shouting horrible threats, and promising to rouse every demon in the mountains. What a nasty fellow, gasped Milo, who was having a great difficulty just getting his legs to move. I hope I never meet him again. I believe he stopped, he stopped chasing us, said the bug, looking back over his shoulder. It's not what's behind that worries me, remarked Talk as they stepped from the sticky mess, but what's ahead? Keep going straight, keep going straight, counseled the voice. <laughs> as they continued to pick their way carefully along the new path. Now step up, now step up, it re recommended, and almost before they knew what had happened, they had all taken a step up and then plunged to the bottom of a deep, murky pit. But he said, up, complained Milo, com Milo complained bitterly from where he lay sprawling. Well, I hope you didn't expect to get anywhere by listening to me said the voice gleefully. <laughs> we'll never get out of here, the humbug moaned, looking at the steep, smooth sides of the pit. That is quite an accurate evaluation of the situation, said the voice coldly. Then why did you help us at all? shouted Milo angrily. Oh, I'd do as much for anybody, he replied. Bad advice is my specialty. For, as you can plainly see, I'm the long-nosed, green-eyed, curly-haired, wide-mouthed, thick-necked, broad-shouldered, round-bodied, short-armed, bow-legged, big-footed monster. And if I do say so myself, one of the most frightening fiends in this whole wild wilderness. With me here, you wouldn't dare try to escape. And with that, he shuffled to the edge of the pit and leered down at his helpless prisoners. <laughs> he doesn't look so scary. Look at that little thing. Talk and Humbug turned away in fright, but Milo, who had learned by now that people are not always what they say they are, reached for his telescope and, and took a long look for himself. And there, at the rim of the hole, instead of what he'd expected, stood a small furry creature with very worried eyes and a rather sheepish grin. Why, you're not long-nosed, green-eyed, curly-haired, wide-mouthed, thick-necked, broad-shouldered, round-bodied, short-armed, bow-legged, or big-footed. And you're not at all frightening, said Milo indignantly. What kind of demon are you? The little creature, who seemed stunned at being found out, leaped back out of sight and began to whimper softly. I'm the demon of insecurity. <laughs> he sobbed. I don't mean what I say, I don't mean what I do, and I don't mean what I am. Most people who believe what I tell them go the wrong way and stay there, but you and your awful tel telescope have spoiled everything. I'm going home. And crying hysterically, he stamped off in a huff. It certainly pays to have a good look at things, observed Milo as he wrapped up the telescope with great care. <laughs> that is a funny little monster of insecurity. <laughs> Now all we have to do is climb out, said Tok, placing his front paws as high on the wall as he could. Here, hop up on my back. <laughs> there they are, <clears throat> climbing out. Milo climbed onto the dog's shoulders. Then the bug crawled on up both of them, and by standing on Milo's head, just managed to hook his cane on the roof of an old gnarled tree. There he goes. 
With loud complaints, he hung on doggedly until the other two had climbed out over him and pulled him up, somewhat dazed and discouraged. <laughs> I'll lead the way for a while, he said, brushing so himself off. Follow me and we'll stay out of trouble. <laughs> what do you predict is going to happen? Uh-oh. And what have we here? Oh, wait. I skipped ahead. I forgot this part. He guided them along one of five narrow ledges, all of which led to a grooved and rutted plateau. They stopped for a moment to rest and make plans, but before they had done either, the whole mountain trembled violently and with a sudden lurch rose high into the air, carrying them along with it. For, for quite accidentally, they had stepped into the calloused hand of the gelatinous giant. There he is. And what have we here? Ow. He roared, looking curiously at the tiny figures huddled in his palm and licking his lips. He was an incredible size, even sitting down, with long, unkempt hair, bulging eyes, and a shape hardly worth speaking. Speaking of, he looked, in fact, very much like a colossal bowl of jelly without the bowl. How dare you disturb my nap? He bellowed furiously, and the force of his hot breath tumbled them over in his hand. We're terribly sorry, said Milo meekly, when he'd untangled himself, but you look just like part of the mountain. Naturally, replied the giant replied in a more normal voice, but even this was like an explosion. I have no shape of my own, so I try to be just like whatever I'm near. In the mountains, I'm a lofty peak. On the beach, a broad sandbar and the forest a towering oak and sometimes in the city i'm a very handsome twelve-story apartment house i just hate to be conspic conspicuous conspicuous sorry conspicuous it's really not safe you know then he looked at them with hungry eyes and wondered how well they taste and we will leave it here with the gelatinous giant and see how they escape will they escape we'll see you next time bye